Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm back again. Um, my phone uh cord it kind of cut it off. Um, I was charging it with my laptop and it just kept beeping and just shut shut my video off. So um, back to what I was saying again about unto the nations. Um, is what this message is. Uh, the seventy one is the number of God's government in the Bible. And the book of Numbers, where I was reading from Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17, um, it's saying here the book of Numbers describes the travails of the people of Israel in the wilderness following the exalted exodus from Egypt. The nation quickly falls from their lofty perch. They are tired, hungry, and thirsty they complain to Moses and God has been dealing with this judgment thing for some time now four or more months I believe at a time and I like I said I did a video before on it and it's here again <clears throat> and there again that's what the 126 um he was showing me I mean he was showing me more than the more than the 26 like the 12 26 22 26 all those numbers, but it's highlighting the 126 and not the 126 is referring to, I guess, as judgment um, on the, or the nation and the government in the government is talking about as well. Um, so it says, um, they are tired, hungry and thirsty. They complain to Moses. God recognizes that Moses had reached his limit and instructions and instructs him, gather for me 70, 70 elders of whom you have experienced as elders and officers of the people and bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their place there with you. Moses, along with the 70 elders, formed the government of Israel according to the divine directive and the next verse sanctifies the hallowed of arrangement and I'll read it to you again I will come down and speak with you there and I will draw upon the spirit that is on you and put it upon them they shall share the burden of the people with you and you shall not bear it alone numbers chapter 11 again Verse 16 and 17. No one person, no one person can lead a nation by themselves. And so God takes some of the spirit ruach that he had given to Moses and places it upon the elders so that all 71 members of this first government can jointly bear the burden of responsibility. Moses and the 70 elders became the basis for the 71 member Sanhedrin, which ruled over Israel for hundreds of years. During the period of the second temple, the Sanhedrin met on the Temple Mount since justice and governance were central features of the temple. The 71st year of Israel thus presents an opportunity to further incorporate biblical principles into the governance of the Jewish state. Um, Israel, okay, wait a minute, I'm not sure if I'm even supposed to read that part or not. Oh my goodness, did I say OMG, oh my gosh. I finally saw where the 126 actually came from, and that's what led me to Isaiah 126. What I'm reading to you all now about the 70 years, 71 years. For 71 years, the Neset has become the seat of power for the Jewish state, assuming a role of major significance according to the Bible. I will restore your magistrates as of old and your counselors as of yore. After that, you shall be called city of righteousness, faithful city, Isaiah 126. That's where I got it from the 71 um, of the uh, nations. Uh, 
unto the nations, rather. 71, the number of God's government in the Bible. And this, this 71 thing is what led me, like I said, from this reading here, led me to the Isaiah 126. As I had read that to you all, or as I was reading this to you all about the 71st, it's talking about the 71st year of Israel presenting an opportunity to incorporate the biblical principles into the governance of the Jewish state. And um, it, it, it stems from that Numbers 11, chapter 11, verse 16, where it talks about, again, Moses, along with the 70 elders, formed the first government of Israel according to the divine directive. So that has something to be connected to. I'm not sure what it is. I'm just uh, being obedient and reading it. Um, and whoever this would resonate with, you know, you know, if you know some type of understanding on it, considering I'm new to this, whatever God is that he constantly giving to me. Um, but I am, um, I'm willing, I'm a willing vessel to be able to be obedient to, um, you know, present this and, you know, read this. So I'm going I'm to go again with uh, this uh, passage. Moses, along with the 70 elders, formed the first government of Israel according to the divine directive. And the next verse sanctifies the hollow arrangement. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will draw upon the spirit that is on you and put it upon them. They shall share the burden of the people with you, and you shall not bear it alone. That's Numbers 11, chapter 11, 16 and 17. And it says underneath this passage, no one person, no one person can lead a nation by, its, by themselves. And, God, and so God takes some of the spirit ruach that he had given to Moses and pl places it upon the elders so that all 71 members of the first government can jointly bear the burden of responsibility. Moses and the 70 elders became the basis for the 71 member Sanhedrin, which ruled over Israel for hundreds of years. During the period of the temple, of the second temple, the Sanhedrin met on the Temple Mount since justice and governance were central features. Just a minute. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> okay, I hit something by mistake and it covered my passage, my reading. Uh, let's see where I'm at. Um, the Sanhedrin met on the Temple Mount since justice and governance were central central features of the temple. So, okay, so I'm reading again. It's saying 71. This year has, a, has the potential of achieving even greater milestones in Israeli history. It's saying if we recognize that the national destiny is fundamentally linked to our biblical heritage. Okay, so for 71 years, the Neset has become the seat of power for the Jewish state, assuming a role of major significance according to the Bible. Okay, so, and as I look up Neset, it says, the, the, the parliament, the parliament, I guess I'm saying it right, the parliament of modern Israel established in 1949. It consists of 120 members elected every four years. And it's saying, how does the parliament work in Israel? The Neset as parliamentary system, as a parliamentary system is presided over by the speaker of the Neset 
and passes laws based off a simple majority of the 120 member voting bloc. Israel's prime minister as head of the ruling party is determined by the party best able to form a coalition comprised of at the minimum a simple majority. Over to my right is saying the Nesset govern gathering or assembly is the unicameral legislature of Israel as the supreme state body the, the, the Neset is sovereign and thus with the exception of checks and balances from the courts and local governments as total control over the entirety of the Israeli government Okay, it also says um, in the Hebrew assembly, unicameral parliament, which I read already, of Israel, a supreme <clears throat> authority of that state is what it's saying. And I'm assuming it has something to do with the, the war in the Gaza as well. Because it has um, farther here at as families at Neset has as he pledges not to ease pressure on Hamas. And it's saying we don't have, this is like two days ago, we don't have time relatives of Israel's held in Gaza shout after he, he declares. I don't know what all this means, but I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with the war and all that in the Gaza. Um, but it's judgment uh, for Israel, which we already know that's what happened. It was judgment on Israel when that attack occurred there. It was um, God, of course, was in it. In it. Um, God had something to do with it. His hand was in that. It was his judgment. Um, over Israel. Okay, so in my reading again from that passage from the 71 unto the nations, um, which 71 is meaning um, the number of God's government, it's stating that unto the nations. It's the number, 71 is the number of God's government. And um, I am to read. The Isaiah again, which stemmed from this number 71 that I was reading to you about Israel and all of that. Um, it's, it's, it's stemming from the government, talking about the government. And of Israel, you know, um, it speaks here. I'm going in the Amplified uh, Version Bible again because it breaks it down and tells you exactly what um, the King James Version um, is speaking about. And it's Isaiah 1, 26 again. And I'm reading it all the way down from the first chapter to the 26. Rebellion of God's people. I read it in the other video, so this is the other half of the video I'm reading. Um, the vision of the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, concerning the kingdom of Judah and its capital, Jerusalem, which he saw as revealed by God during the reigns of Uzziah. Remember, this is hooked up with the, the um, number 71 that the government and Israeli, the, everything that I read about that. This is the interpretation of it through the word, the scriptures, God's scriptures, and Judah and its capital Jerusalem, which he saw as he as revealed by God during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have reared and brought up sons. But they have rebelled against me and have broken away. The ox instinctively knows its owner, and the donkey 
its master's feeding trough. But Israel does not know me as Lord. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nature, a people loaded down with wickedness, with sin, with injustice, with wrongdoing, offspring of evildoors, with the offspring of our ancestors. So what it's saying, offspring of evildoers. What was back in the day is, is now, nothing new under the sun. Sons who have behaved corruptly, they have abandoned, rejected the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel, provoking him to anger. They have turned away from him. We should, why should you be stricken and punished again? Since no change results from it, you only continue to rebel. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint and sick. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing healthy in the nation's body. Listen carefully. Only bruises, welts, and raw wounds. Not pressed out or bandaged nor softened with oil as a remedy. Your land lies desolate because of your disobedience. You're talking about Israel. Your cities are burned with fire. Your fields, strangers are devouring them in your very presence. It is desolate as overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, is left like a deserted, shelter in a vineyard like a watchman's hit hut a cucumber field like a besieged city isolated surrounded by devastation if the lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors we would be like saddam we would be like gomorrah next passage speaks god has had enough the 10th verse Hear the word of the Lord, rulers of Jerusalem, you rulers of another, Saddam. Listen to the law and instruction of our God, you people of another, Gomorrah. 11th verse, what are your multiplied sacrifices to me without your repentance, says the Lord. That's a question. I have had enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed cattle without your obedience. And I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls or lambs or goats offered without repentance. When you come to appear before me, who requires this of you, this trampling of my temple courts by your sinful feet? That's the question. Do not bring worthless offers again your incense is repulsive to me. I mean, it's an abomination to me, which it reads in the um, King James Version. It's an abomination to me. Your new moon and Sabbath observances, the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing, and the squaler of the festive assembly. 14th verse, I hate the hypocrisy of your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. And it's not saying that uh, observances of uh, Sabbaths and new moons is wrong and worthless to him, an abomination to him. It's saying that the wicked that are trying to do this, that's covering up and hiding under God and hiding you're really hiding from people and hiding and fooling yourself you're not hiding under God you think you are but he's over all and he sees all and this is what he's saying he's saying what's hidden what's done in the dark will come to the light what's hidden it shall be revealed so right now 
is things are being revealed. Uh, what's hidden is, is going to come to the light. So um, these uh, new moons and Sabbath observances are abomination to him because of you doing it through wickedness and it's not being honored in that manner. 14 verse said, I hate the hypocrisy of your new moon festivals. That's what I was explaining to you. And your appointed feasts, they have become a burden to me. I am weary of burying them, of burying them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, pleading for my help, help, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Get your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn. He's disgusted and he's fed up, as you can hear. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the ruthless. Defend the fatherless. Plead the rights of the widow in court. Next passage, which is saying, let us reason. 18 verse, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are, are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Another passage is called the Zion, Zion Corrupted to be Redeemed. This is the 21st verse to the 26th, which will be the last reading. How the faithful city has become a prostitute of idolatrous despicable. She who was full of justice, right standing with God, once lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has turned to lead. Your wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, meaning being rebellious, and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and chases after gifts. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the widow's cause come before them. Instead, they delay or turn a deaf ear. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts the mighty of Israel declares, Ah, I will be free, freed of my adversaries and avenge myself on my enemies. 25th verse, I will turn my hand against you and will thoroughly purge away your draws as with lie and remove all your tin impurity. Then, 26th verse, last verse, Then I will restore your judges as at the first, and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, afterward, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Okay, so now he's leading me back to, which, which is the scriptures I had already um, went to, that he led me to, um, back to Psalm 71, um, and it's showing the King James well, it's got the National Kingdom version on here. But it says, Deliver me, oh, oh my God. This is referring right back to uh, the nations. Yeah, that was referring this 71 um, Psalms and all the rest of these verses that I am to read is um, corresponding and connected with um you know, the reading, the passage unto the nations, which the number 71 is the number of God's government in the Bible. So I am to read um, where I started from with the 71, Psalm 71. And it says, Deliver me, O God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth, but you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise will continually, excuse me, my praise shall be continually of you. And saying we live in a world full of sin and evil. We live in a world full of wicked people. 
There are threats and dangers everywhere and all the time. There are threats and dangers to ourselves and to those we love. Even when things seem safe and secure, the possibility of an attack is ever present. Whether we like it or not, we must live and walk amidst the wicked of the world. So it's another part here to be the reading. Give the threat, given the threats and dangers, we need protection. We need the kind of protection only the Lord God can give. We need the Lord God to deliver us from the hand of the wicked. We need him to walk with us and our loved ones through life and keep us from falling into the snares of the wicked. And this is a passage for it. Indeed, let the wicked fall into their own nets while we escape safely, which is Psalms 141. And ten. These are the scriptures that I'm supposed to read for this, for all of this, to tie it, to tie it together. I'm sorry. 